in this lesson, we want to review solving a three-part inequality. So in the last lesson, we reviewed how to solve any linear inequality in one variable. In this lesson, we just want to talk a little bit about three-part inequalities and kind of set the stage for our next lesson where we're really going to start talking about compound inequalities. So if we have something like negative 11 is less than x minus 5, which is less than 4, how could we solve this for x? Well, let's rewrite this first. We have x minus 5 that's in the middle. We can say that this is greater than negative 11. And we can use a special keyword here. We could say and it's less than 4. So we don't have to write it like this. We can kind of split this guy up using that keyword and, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. The first way I want to show you how to solve this is to basically do the same thing to each part. So you have a part right here on the left, you have a part right here in the middle, and you have a part right here on the right. So that's why we say a three-part inequality. My goal is to isolate the variable x in the middle. I want x to be between two numbers. And so what I want to do is add 5 to each part because I'm subtracting 5 away here in the middle. So if I add 5 in the middle, and then I add 5 on the right, and then I add 5 on the left, what's going to happen is this negative 5 and this plus 5 here, those are going to cancel, right? Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. So we get x in the middle, and we could say this is greater than negative 11 plus 5 is going to give me negative 6. And we could say, and it's less than 4 plus 5 is 9. So realize what this is saying. This is saying that x is between negative 6 and 9. In other words, x has to be greater than negative 6 and also less than 9. So let's kind of look at this on the number line so we can fully understand this concept. Let's kind of drag this up here and let's take a look at this guy. So if I wanted a number that was between negative 6 and 9, and it's not inclusive because these are strict inequalities, I would find negative 6 on my number line, which is right here. I would put a parenthesis facing to the right. Then I would find 9, which is right here. I would put a parenthesis facing to the left. And then I would shade everything in between. So the area that I shaded there, that represents all the solutions that are possible for x. If I grab any number in that range, any number that's in the shaded area, it will work. Let's grab one. Let's say we chose 3 as an example. So we would have negative 6 is less than 3, which is less than 9. Is that a true statement? Is 3 greater than negative 6? Yes. Is 3 less than 9? Yes. So this is true. Both parts have to be true. If I grab something outside of the shaded area, let's say I grabbed negative 7 as an example, what's going to happen is it'll be true in one scenario but false in the other, and so it's false for the three-part inequality. So let's say we did negative 6 is less than negative 7, which is less than 9. Okay, is that true? Is negative 7 greater than negative 6? Nope, that's false, right? That's false. So you can mark the whole thing as false, even though you could say that negative 7 is less than 9. That part's true. But the whole thing's got to be true. It's got to be larger than negative 6 and also less than 9. So the numbers that fit that criteria are in this shaded area area here, okay, where negative 6 and 9 are kind of the endpoints. They're not included. Those are the boundaries. And everything in between works as a solution. Now, the other way you can think about this is you can split this guy up using the keyword and that I mentioned, okay? So you could take this guy x minus 5, and you could say this is greater than negative 11, okay? So you solve that as one problem. You use your keyword and, then you're going to take the other side, so you're going to say x minus 5, and you're going to set that as less than 4. So you solve these individually, and then you put them back together with that keyword and. So what I would do is just add 5 to each side of the inequality here. So negative 11 plus 5 is negative 6. This is less than. This cancels. You just have x. So then again, you have the keyword and. Here you add 5 to each side of the inequality. So you get x is less than 9. So we have that x is greater than negative 6 and x is less than 9. So in other words, both of these have to be true. It's the same thing. It's just a little bit easier to understand when you put x in the middle and you say x is greater than negative 6 and less than 9. right? Because this way it's crystal clear that x is a number between negative 6 and 9, 
with negative six and nine not being included because again, these are strict inequalities. If you want to, besides graphing this guy, you can of course write it in interval notation. And so I can say that my solution here, I'd put a negative six next to a parenthesis because the negative six is not included, comma, I'd put a nine, and again, a parenthesis next to nine because it's not included. So this is kind of two different ways to notate this, and then you have a way to graph it, right? So that's kind of the solution for this three-part inequality. In the next section, we're gonna talk more about compound inequalities with and, and you're gonna see that in some scenarios, you can't start out writing them as a three-part inequality. They're gonna to have to be broken up, okay? Because you're gonna have more than just a variable expression in the middle. You're gonna have variable expressions all over the place. And so it's not gonna allow you to basically write it in this format. This is the easier scenario. So let's go ahead and take a look at another one. All right, for the next one, we have negative 63 is less than or equal to 10x plus seven, which is less than or equal to 77. Or you could use your and keyword. You could say 10x plus seven is greater than or equal to negative 63, and it's less than or equal to 77. Okay, so you could break it up if you wanted to. In this specific situation, because you just have this variable expression in the middle, it's just easier to work it by kind of doing the same thing to each part. If you split it up, you got to put it back together. So it's just extra work. So we have negative 63 is less than or equal to, again, 10x plus seven, which is less than or equal to 77. Okay, so let's solve this guy. Very, very easy. I want to isolate x in the middle. So since seven is being added to this term 10x, I wanna subtract seven away from each part. Okay, so from each part. So that's gonna cancel. So in the middle, I'll just have 10x. And then on the left-hand side, negative 63 minus seven is negative 70. On my right-hand side, 77 minus seven is going to be positive 70. Now I wanna isolate x right here. Since I'm multiplying x by 10, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide each part by 10, right? So I can isolate x. So in the middle we'll have x, and so it's gonna be greater than or equal to negative 70 divided by 10 is negative seven, and it's less than or equal to 70 divided by 10 is seven. So we see that x is greater than or equal to negative seven, and it's less than or equal to seven, okay? So let's erase all this. I'll kind of drag this up to the number line. So in interval notation, you have non-strict inequalities here. So you're gonna put a bracket next to negative seven, then comma, you'll have a positive seven and another bracket. Graphically, I'm going to find negative seven. I'm gonna put a bracket. I'm gonna find positive seven. I'm gonna put a bracket. And I'm just gonna shade everything in between there. So the solution here for X is any value that's between negative seven and seven with negative seven and seven included, right? Because we have, again, non-strict inequalities. All right, for the next one, let's take a look at an example with some fractions involved. So we have negative 16 fifths is less than or equal to negative seven halves X plus 19 fifths, which is less than you have 159 fifths. So the first thing I'm gonna do is clear the fractions. Again, if you wanna work with the fractions, it doesn't really matter. For me, I like to not work with fractions because it just makes the inequality a lot cleaner. So the LCD here, you have five, you have two, you have five and you have five. It's basically five times two or 10. So if I multiplied each guy here by 10, what would I have? Well, 10 multiplied by this guy right here, the five and the 10 would cancel and give me a two. Two times negative 16 is negative 32. So you'd have negative 32 is less than or equal to, if I multiply this guy by 10, 10 divided by two is five, five times negative seven is negative 35, and then times X. Then over here, if I multiply this by 10, 10 would cancel with five and give me two. Two times 19 is 38, so plus 38. And then this is less than, if I multiply this guy by 10, 10 divided by five is again two, two times 159 is 318, okay, 318. All right, so from this point, it's pretty easy. I just wanna isolate X in the middle. So all I need to do is start out by just subtracting 38 away from each part. And negative 32 minus 38 is gonna be negative 70. And this is less than or equal to, you have negative 35X, this canceled. And this is less than 318 minus 38 is gonna be 280. So now all I wanna do is isolate X in the middle. So I'm gonna divide each part by negative 35. 
but I've got to be very careful here because again, when I work with inequalities, if I multiply or divide by a negative, I've got to flip the direction of the inequality symbol. So that means that this guy right here has to get flipped and this guy has to get flipped. So this one is a less than or equal to, it will become a greater than or equal to. This is a less than, it will become a greater than. So X will be in the middle. Negative 70 over negative 35 is gonna be positive two. And 280 over negative 35 is negative eight, okay? Now, although this is technically correct because your symbols are each pointing towards the smaller number of negative eight, you generally wanna order this the same way you would see things on a number line. Negative eight is less than X, which is less than or equal to two, okay? Typically, you're just working with less than or less than or equal to symbols when you work with the three-part inequality because this is not technically in the order of the number line, although it is valid because the signs are both pointing to the smaller number, okay? But this is generally what we do. Now, let me erase everything. All right, so to put this in interval notation, negative eight is not included. So I'm gonna put a parenthesis and then a negative eight. And then two is included, so I'm gonna put a two and then a bracket. Now, graphically, I'm gonna follow the same format I'm gonna put a parenthesis at negative eight, and I'm gonna put a bracket at two, and I'm just gonna shade everything in between, okay? Everything in between. So X is greater than negative eight, and also it's less than or equal to two. So any number in the shaded region, including two, because again, we use a non-strict inequality here, but not including negative eight because we use a strict inequality there. All right, let's take a look at one more. So we have negative one is less than or equal to two X minus five over six, which is less than or equal to two. All right, so the idea here is to start out by just multiplying each part by six so I can get rid of that denominator. So let's just copy our problem here. We have negative one is less than or equal to two X minus five. Again, this is over six, which is less than or equal to two. All right, so if I wanna clear that denominator of six, I can multiply each part by six. And what's gonna happen is this guy over here is gonna cancel, right? Six over six is one, so that's gone. On the left, six times negative one is negative six. So this is less than or equal to, you'll have your two X minus five, and this is less than or equal to, two times six is just 12. So let's get some room going. All I wanna do now is just add five to each part. Very, very simple, so that this part goes away. Negative six plus five is negative one. So this is less than or equal to. Now you just have two X in the middle and this is less than or equal to. 12 plus five is 17, okay? So the last thing here is to isolate X and to do that, I'm multiplying X by two. So I just divide each part by two. So what I'm gonna end up with is that X is going to be greater than or equal to negative one half and it's less than or equal to 17 halves, okay? So let's erase everything. So in interval notation, I'm gonna basically use a bracket with each of these numbers. I'd have a bracket and then a negative one half, and then comma, I'd have a 17 halves and then a bracket. Now, when we go to do our graphical solution here, our number line is arranged in a scale with integers involved. That's okay. We know that negative one half would be pretty much about right here. So I'm just gonna put a marking there in between zero and negative one, basically where I see the halfway mark. And I'll just put a little arrow there saying this is negative one half. And I'm gonna put a bracket there, okay, facing to the right. All right, so 17 halves, that's basically going to be 8.5. So I'm gonna go halfway between eight and nine. I'm gonna put a little mark there, draw my arrow and say this is 17 halves. Again, I'm just gonna put a bracket there. And now I can shade everything in between. So we can say that X is greater than or equal to negative one half. And it's also less than or equal to 17 halves. So X can be any value between negative one half and 17 halves with negative one half and 17 halves included.